try and stop her. And, you know, he said, look, she's just a relentless scorer. One of the things they're going to be focused on is how good she is in transition. Transition defense, big key to the game today for the Sparks. Derek Fisher in his third year named general manager in the offseason. We talked about the busy offseason he's had, assisted by Latricia Trammell, Fred Williams, and Cody Watson, the athletic trainer. We are ready to start playing some ball here inside the convention center to be the rookie Charlie Collier and Neko Gumake at center. And here we go. Sparks wearing their black uniforms. The wings in the white. Here's Eric Wheeler with the big free agent acquisitions for Fisher and the Sparks. And Neko's a nice up and under to get things started. First two points goes to your former teammate, Ross. You know, the beautiful combination that Neka Agumake has is she's athletic, but she's so skilled. There's so much finesse and control in that fast move she makes to the basket. Quick early lead for the Sparks. Coach Fisher talked about this team being able to get after it defensively. And we're going to have an offensive foul early on Agumboale. And the Sparks will take any foul trouble they can get out of Agumboale, even if it seems kind of odd and quick here, but that's exactly what the Sparks want to be about. They're going to hang their hat on two things this season. Derek Fisher wants it to be about playing fast and playing defense. Here's Wheeler. Three point is up, in and out. That one, no good there by Sykes. Here's a Gumba Wale. This is tough in transition. But nice job with the Sparks getting a hand on that. Out of bounds. I think the real change agent there was Brittany Sykes working to get down there and be help ready and stop that drive of Agumba Wale, who had the first step there. That's part of the keys to the game and the focus and concentration on the defensive end of the ball. Coach Fisher wants to see this team get back. Transition defense. Wings weren't one of the top teams as far as pace goes last season, but under first year head coach Vicki Johnson, they intend to push a little bit more. Here's Sykes getting the rebound. And you see the versatility that Coach Fisher wants too. Sykes gets the rebound, let her bring it up. That's the pace that you can play at with multiple players that can bring it up. Charlie Collar getting the rebound there. The number one overall pick out of the University of Texas in this most recent WNBA draft. That one last touch by the Wings. So you see active hands already, Rocks. Yeah, Rashawn, and I also see, you know, it's a little bit sloppy early for the Wings, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that they're super young. This is a really young squad. There's going to be some growing pains. They were young last year. They continue to be young again with four, four amazing draft picks. So, um, you know, they're still figuring some things out, and there might be some turnover. Willow going screen and roll with Neca. Pulls up 17-foot, knocked it down. Erica Wheeler, nice to drive in to work and see Erica Wheeler on the 110 freeway on that big Adidas billboard. How are you not happy for Erica Wheeler? All she does is exceed expectations. You go from undrafted to a billboard and not just any old Podunk City in Los Angeles at that. And she's got 202, <laughs> well, right by LAX. So oh, she's at the airport? Yeah, she's at the airport okay. too. Making waves. <laughs> KT for three. Left out one short. It's Kayla Thornton with it. Mariah Jefferson in transition three, and she got it. I'm very excited to see it. Mariah Jefferson, what she can do if she can put together a healthy season. You know, two seasons in a row, she's just been hampered with injuries, and it's it's stopped her progress and momentum she was building. Quick bucket there from Sykes. Derek Fisher excited about her, saying people really haven't seen what Brittany Sykes can do. They know her primarily from a defensive standpoint, but there's a whole skill set that's sort of been untapped. Nice bucket there by the rook. And that's one thing that Collier can do. She's got nice shooting touch. She had 10 and 10 in the long preseason game for the Wings. Okay, Janae Wooligay. Okay. First she's, bucket. And she said she was working on shooting coming into the season. Uh, media availability, she said, you know, I've been working on it, and when it's there, I just want to green light, don't think about it, shoot it. Look for her to step out some, too. That rebound taken there by Chanel. So she's active here. Here's KT looking to get into the front court. Christy Tolliver, two-time WNBA champion. We told you she was a walking bucket. Here's my analysis. <laughs> like, Christy, you know what Christy Tolliver's going to do. Who sets you up with that little dribble, step back? You know it's coming. She knows it's coming, but you can't stop it. Shanae Gumake working on her game right here. Didn't overthink it at all. Step right into the shot and knocks it down. Back in.
inside the convention center. Say hi, Ross. Oh, that's Ross. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Sparks by six. Uh, no fans yet in here. Once the Sparks return home in June, there are some plans to be able to get some season ticket holders in here. In the meantime, take a look at some of the key additions for the Sparks this year. Christy Tolliver, she opted out last season after re-signing with the Sparks. We talked about the key losses in, in, in Parker and Gray, but there's a lot to be excited about this team, right? Yeah, you, the one young and Jasmine Walker, rookie, um, we're excited about her growth and what she can bring to the table, great shooter. But everybody else there is a veteran leadership uh, addition. Erica Wheeler is vocal. You got Chenea Bumake, vocal. Tolliver, championship experience, uh, lead by example, coach's mindset. You know, oh, Amanda Zowie B, she's out tonight with a back injury, but she's someone that brings toughness, a veteran experience. These are great injections to the team. Brittany Sykes short on the three there. Yeah, just three players who were on the active roster last year remain uh, on the Sparks here in 2021. Yeah, you know, we spoke with Derek Fisher. Uh, we would be remiss if you don't talk about the loss of Candace Parker and certainly Chelsea Gray. These are incredible talented players and then Candace Parker just such a, a, a cornerstone for, for the Sparks franchise but we spoke with Coach Fisher about it and basically he was just saying that there's so much respect um, there's so much greatness to build off of from this franchise there's so much that like infuses this current team that those players put into the franchise and now it's an exciting time he was saying for the team where there's a chance to build a new identity build on that you know, there's a lot of opportunity on this season's team. It's there for anyone who's hungry to, to really step up. So re, re, remolding, reshaping what Sparks fans have been accustomed to. And it's an exciting time, without a doubt. Got the silver anniversary season, the, the new uniforms backed up by Nike. And this almost brand new roster here for the Sparks. But it's in the image of, of Derek Fisher in the way that he wants to see this team grow in the way that he wants to play. Yeah, which is going to be fast, which is going to be commit to defense, holding each other accountable. And if you'll, you know, there are hard decisions that the roster had to make when you're trimming down. And basically, there was a commitment to versatile players, length, positionless ball. Christy Tolliver getting the friendly bounce there. So, you know, there's no Sydney Weiss, there's no Chelsea Gray as your guards, but it opens up the door for Erica Wheeler and Chrissy Tolliver to go off. And then you got a bunch, a whole stable of wings who can do a lot of different things, you know, have versatility on both offense and defense. Mabry will inbound it. That last foul was charged to Christy Tolliver against Agumba Wallow. Fortuitous tip there. As Harrison's able to get the layup. Harrison doing a nice job of being active, moving without the ball. Cooper will earn two shots. Harrison just outworked the defense to that bucket. You know, you've got to be determined to jump in front of the ball as she's cutting. That foul charge to Ngumbuwale. Here's Taya Cooper at the free throw line. Second year player out of Baylor. Got a little bit banged up towards the end of the preseason game. Took a knee to the hamstring area. But Coach Fish says she's all good. And she misses that first one. 77% foul shooter last season down yeah. in the Wubble. What a surprise she was for this team last season. I mean, if you really wrap your mind around it, this is Taya Cooper's first training camp. Yeah. You know, she's legitimately going through first-time experiences, even though she's a second-year player because of the pandemic, it, it, there, were, there was essentially no training camp, and imagine being a rookie coming in without that chance to work, to learn, to gain exposure. That's why with Phoenix, she was really cut before the season even had a chance, she had a chance to show herself. Blessing in disguise, though, coming to Sparks. Absolutely. Beautiful touch pass there from Tolliver to NECA. It's a nine-point lead for the Sparks. And Cooper taking the charge there on the sideline. Take a look at that last play, Ross. You see the active hands, Nia Coffee getting there with the steal, and then they're running. Active hands, active feet. There is nothing like the momentum of offense created off of defense. And um, can we also credit Chrissy Tolliver with that little touch assist? Absolutely. That was sweet. 
It was, it was quiet. It was, you know, you almost had to, like, look hard to see it. I mean, that, that personifies <laughs> Christy Tolliver, though, right? Right? Like, her game does the talking. Yeah, no sleep. <laughs> Facts. Here's Nega working underneath. Loses it. No foul there. Got some contact, and looks like this time they're going to get Cooper for the block. Cooper's going to get the, the block there, but I'm here for the energy of it. Uh, it's it's her willingness to come pick up the ball, catch the guard by surprise, and try to take a charge. If I'm if 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 I'm coach, I'm okay with that effort because I know that she's got her mind in the right place right there. She's the type of player right now in year two, building off of a season with Taya Cooper, where she earned her minutes by bringing energy in the second year. Here's Mabry with it, former teammate of Agumba Wale's at Notre Dame, Ty Harris. Now Gray, working against Bria Holmes. Excellent defense. Tremendous the defense there by the Sparks, and they're running once again. Cutting players off, getting in their shorts, not allowing them to get past them, no first step. And then uh, they allowed a contested shot and finished with a box out and the rebound. In the highlights film session, that's going to be one. Great defensive possession there. Shanae Agumake was trying to return to the game. She'll have to wait for the next dead ball. Here's Mabry against Cooper. And a jump hook in the lane is good there by Isabel Harrison. Harrison very collected down there, took her time, able to get a nice touch. NECA with the blow by. Too fast. Harris, the nice crossover. Can't leave Mabry open. She'll hurt you from out there. Marina Mabry, kind of a breakout year last year in the Wubble. But one thing she does well is shoot the three. 42% from beyond the arc last year. Holmes can't finish. But there's Cooper, eighth turnover of the game for Dallas. The pull up, too long. Taya Cooper is active. She's everywhere, just creating havoc, making teams uncomfortable. Nice bucket and the foul there for Gray. Right there, Sparks getting caught in front of the basketball. And Alicia Gray with a strong drive and finish. The, the real game changer there is finishing with the inside hand, which really allowed her to, to finish and gain that contact. Lefty foul shot is good from Gray. Fifth year player out of South Carolina. So the Wings, despite their eight turnovers, within three here in this first quarter. Here's Cheney. That one rattled in and out. But you see her kind of stepping out a little bit more, Ross. She's going to get outside that three point line before it's over with. Mabry, meanwhile, a three and she ties it up. Mabry can really shoot it. And actually, Coach Fisher said before the game, she's someone that he wanted to be aware of. You've got to identify her as soon as she crosses half court and at least be talking about her because she really can stroke it. And this is why transition defense is so important. Dallas trying to take advantage of the Liberty defense, not completely set up, because when they are, they've been wreaking havoc, but when they're getting back, they have a little glimmer of hope and space. Here's Harris, throws it right into the Sparks defense. Jasmine Walker with it in the front court. Cooper, no good, but the weak side rebound there by Coffey, and she puts it back up and in. Nia Coffey. Every, every team needs a player like a Nia Coffey, I feel, Roz. She's an energizer. See what I did I there? see what you did it's okay. I, I did. <laughs> Too many steps there. But she absolutely fits into everything that Derek Fisher is uh, trying to do here as far as players that can play a, a few positions. She can help with versatility, defending, you know, inside, and just working hard uh, in there and, and being on balance going for that putback. Told you she'd step outside, and she knocks it down. Chanae Agumake for three. Chanae said, I might not have been in the bubble, 
but I worked all off season on this confidence, and I'm putting it up there. She's got five. Her and Derek Fisher had a talk. Fish said he wants her to take at least three three-point attempts per game. That was her first one there, and she knocked it down, and she comes up with the steal. Cheney, three on two for the Sparks. Nice bounce pass. Holmes left it for Cooper, but a little bit too long there. Now Cheney got the defense jumping. Cheney on an ISO. Okay, she's gonna get the offensive foul there. And you know, she actually has the size advantage against Gray. That might have been a situation where Taya Cooper or another guard comes over. You know, you just trust, give it to your guard, and now take Gray down there and go post her up. You know, just get it right back to me, but I'm gonna take her a little bit closer in because I'm bigger. You know, but I, I like the aggression and the energy of it. And Rashawn, you made a great point. Coach Fisher is asking her to take that shot. There's nothing like your coach breathing confidence into you. You ain't afraid of, of making mistakes. Instead, you feel empowered. Yeah, how much does that help you on the floor? So much. You're not overthinking, and, and that's such a difference maker. It's Mabry in deep. Oh, and that right there is growth for Mabry right there because we talked about her three-point shot. She's worked really hard on adding more dimension to her game. So right there off the bounce. She's got eight now off the bench to lead all scores as Holmes draws the foul. That's going to be charged against Harrison. Marina Mabry does a nice job of staying under control and actually taking a ton of contact on that finish. You see Vicki Johnson there, her first season at the helm for the Dallas Wings. Previously spent the one season as a head coach in San Antonio, the 2017 season, prior to that team being purchased and relocated to Las Vegas. A lot of people thought she got some sort of a raw deal. Derek Fisher said she is no doubt a pioneer in this league. We talked about that first game when you and I were watching Roz on opposite coast. Vicki Johnson played in that one with the Liberty. 13-year vet in the W. I mean, you talk about celebrating 25 years of the WNBA. There's nothing more full circle than in the first game of, of this 25th season, you have a coach who played in the first game of that inaugural year. Collier tries to save it underneath their own baskets in the hands of Walker. Here's Jasmine Walker, the seventh overall pick in the draft. Coffee, no. Cheney battling. Cheney Ogumake. And that's how we'll end this first quarter. Cheney with seven on three or four from the field in just seven minutes. Getting active here, Ross. Christy Tolliver. Utilizing that soft touch, gets the bounce. Cheney Agumake, all confidence, no hesitation, stepping up and knocking down that jumper. Neka Agumake putting the gas pedals on. Sparks by seven as we get ready to start the second quarter here in downtown Los Angeles. This game is actually a Commissioner's Cup game. So you're playing for something right off the bat, Ross. Ten interconference games in the first half of the season. So the number one team in the West will take on the number one team in the East. They'll meet after the Olympic break and a lot of money on the line. Yeah, there's a monetary incentive, there's bragging rights, it adds a little added urgency throughout the season. Um, all these games still count towards the regular season and, and you're standing for playoffs. Um, and I also think too, you know, you've got that long Olympic break and then you come right back out and there's an immediate urgency, like there's something on the line that the players can play for. Um, a lot of players play overseas and many of them have actually said, this Commissioner's Cup feels a lot like, you know, the cup games they might have within the, the longer season. And for those of us who aren't used to that, I just think, Rashawn, it's going to take a little time for eventually. This is the first time we're trying something new. But once you get a tradition going, you know, I, I imagine eventually it'll be like, okay, you know, won the Commissioner's Cup last season and it'll become something you really talk about. So this is the beginnings of it. And you'll be talking to Kathy Engelbert, the WNBA commissioner at the half, Ross. If you're a soccer fan, almost like what they do in soccer with some of those cup games. As a run out there from the wings and earning a couple of free throw shots will be Thornton. Yeah, Kayla Thornton actually is going to get a lot of opportunity here. Um, uh, both not with the team, Satu Sabali and Awak Kuir. You know, both of them are 
front court players, um, and there's going to be a lot of opportunity. And um, Coach Johnson actually said Kayla Thornton is someone that they're going to have to lean on. She's going to have to step up. She's going to get a whole lot of opportunity. Um, but both Satu Sabali, Awak Puir still have not um, made it in from overseas obligations yet. And these are huge losses right now for the Dallas Wings to start, you know, a chunk of your season, have no training camp with them. Uh, Awak Puir is a number two overall draft pick that – is just has already has so much pro experience and a ton of versatility with all her size. There's huge expectations for her. And then Satu Sabli is an all rookie selection. This is their top rebounder and shot blocker from last season, second leading scorer. This Dallas Wings team is not only young, they're without key players, and they've got a new system from a new head coach to implement. There's a lot of meshing and growing and growing pains that's going to happen at this early point of the season. Wheeler fouling Agumbu Wale on the three there. And to your point, Ross, Coach Johnson saying, look, no excuses. You know, we can't just wait for them to come back. Like, we, <laughs> we got to take care of business now. You know, we got, we got stuff to do. Right. And, and I, I asked Coach Johnson, we had the chance to speak with her before the game, and we said, I asked, how much – openness do you have um, or forgiveness do you have for mistakes and she said look it's, I am a teacher and I enjoy teaching so we're going to be in these practices we're drilling it's not for any there, there won't be any situation where someone doesn't know you know wasn't prepared with the tools to be great out there but there might be a situation where you drop the ball you miss a rotation that's fine what she more wants to see solidified especially early in the season are the right culture builders like are y'all holding each other accountable actually she said are you holding yourself accountable are you working hard you know and, and so those types of things is what you build a culture off of first Arella Garantes in the game for the Sparks for the first time in uniform number 22 as Coffee gets called for a travel. So that's the fourth turnover of the game for the Sparks. Wings have 12. Wings shooting nearly 70%, but it's all those turnovers that have them down by seven at the end of the quarter. But NATO run here to start this second. Here's Thornton. Poked away, Bria Holmes got it. Holmes in the front court, lay it up and hey, oh no. Tipped out, but the cleanup is there by Coffee. That one wouldn't stay down for Holmes. And, and all game long so far, Nia Coffee has just been cleaning up. Effort, extra energy, following shots, getting an offensive rebound, not taking the playoff, and, and running down there just in case her teammate didn't make the layup, and she was rewarded for that effort. You know, Holmes with the ball. It, a lot of players might have just watched her all the way down. Not not coffee. You know, and being there and being able to make that play, it's it's part of the effort. Sparks with 15 points off 13 wings turnovers. Also, Garantes was, was a part of that play, too. She ran down there and also tipped the ball so that that was able to happen. So, you know, right now, like, it's not perfect basketball right now for either team, but you're just seeing that the effort, the intangibles, the culture builders happening early in the season now. Here's Chene. She had seven in the first quarter. Nice cut underneath. Garante is wide open. Her first bucket as a pro. Arella Garante is the rookie out of Rutgers. And yeah, she's coming off that screen hard. And I like the pace that she's playing with. She missed a lot of training camp, and that's really hard for a rookie. But she's done well even still. Holmes with another steal. And she had some COVID protocol issues and missed a good chunk of training camp, which actually was really tough because most of, a good chunk of the team for the Sparks didn't know if they were going to make the roster. And so actually she back cuts the screen. It's a great read. She catches her defense, you know, too over, too much paying attention to the screen coming. It's a, it's a high IQ read from Garantes, the rookie right there, and just slips the screen. And it's a nice pass from Chenea Gumike. Wheeler steps into a three. No good. Neka fighting for the rebound. Can't get it, though, however, as Gray comes up with it. Agumbo Wale on the attack. Gray, lefty three. Missed everything there. And he sparks basketball. Agumbo Wale's been quiet here. Just three points. Those all came from the free throw line. That was actually the first field goal she's taken tonight. Sure, if you're Derek Fisher, you'll take that. Oh, definitely. 
But one thing that Derek Fisher said pre-game about Agumba Wale is she is relentless and she has a short-term memory. Meaning, uh, she miss, she forgets it. Shoot or shoot. Shoot or shoot. <laughs> She's on to the next one. You know, they say next man up, she says next shot up. But actually, you know, I, and t I'll say that better because I feel like sh last season she did take a lot of shots. You know, this is the league's leading scorer from last season, but so much of that was out of necessity too. You have injuries, you have a young team, you're the best player. You know, and so hopefully as the team continues to grow and mature, you might see her shot selection and the number of shots just kind of level out so that you can see the best version of a Goomba Wale that doesn't have so much burden to carry. That was Wheeler drawing the offensive foul in the backcourt. So that was the second against a Goomba Wale. She goes to the bench. Nekka, meanwhile, working underneath. Stuffed there by Collier. Going to be a jump ball. And Collier showing the length, the defensive potential there. Able to keep her hands straight up and just use her length to get make a defensive play. Mabry's presence as well. Active hands made it tough on Neka Ogumike. Wheeler, the crossover. Tipped out of bounds by Dallas. So just two seconds left on the shot clock for the Sparks. Scarantes will inbound it, baseline out of bounds. Shanae on the lob. Have more time there, probably Roz, but try to just tip it in. Meanwhile, back come the wings. And that's what Charlie Collier can do. She can stroke it. She's got good range. She can shoot the ball. And at her size, it makes her very dangerous. Nice cut there by Neca, And she's going to get two shots. Kyler using a nice little jab step just to set up the space. You know, she's already long and tall, and then her release is high. You don't need a whole ton of it, a whole ton of space to, to really get your shot off. So here's Madam President mm -hmm. at the foul line. Neka Agumake. All the flowers. Give it to her. She mentioned to you, Ross, last year was really, really tough for yeah, her. Yeah. And, and that's, yeah. Like, I think we cheer and praise her so much for her leadership of the as the president of the players association and and, and first helping with you know a, a, a special CBA agreement and then the pandemic hit and getting the bubble started even with the help you know of Terry Jackson and and uh, Kathy Engelbert I mean the leadership all around has been incredible and then through all of the racial injustice and police brutality I mean just really stepping up in that moment to lead you don't realize the toll it takes to be it's the face yeah. of a movement and actually she said coming into the season she felt refreshed like that's a lot to work with and you wanted to go out there and defend and set screens and be a MVP candidate every year. You are putting a lot on Neka Agumake, and I'm excited and happy for her to come into this season feeling refreshed. Wide open three from the corner is good. Kayla Thornton once again, and wings back up by two. Neka saying she needed to create healthy boundaries in this offseason to be able to get her work done. Travel there against Christy Tolliver. And that's going to take us to a timeout on the floor. More to come here from state from the LA Convention Center. The Wings lead by two. Tonight's game is presented by Equitrust Life Insurance, the marquee partner of the Los Angeles Sparks. Tonight's item of the game is the official 25th anniversary commemorative collector's box. 
filled with exclusive branded gear and dynamic QR code for access to an exclusive event with two-time WNBA champion, two-time WNBA Finals MVP, and eight-time WNBA All-Star Lisa Leslie. Available for purchase at LASparks.com. Rashawn Haylock, Roz Gold, Unwoode here with you inside the Los Angeles Convention Center. You take a look at Neko Gwumake there, the WNBA MVP from back in 2016. Also the year of the last Sparks Championship. President of the Players Association. He does it all on and off the floor. Here's Marina Mabry. The screen rolled there with Allery. Raked away. Back to Mabry. Seven on the shot clock. Fall away. No good. Rebound snatched up by Cheney, her fourth. Here's Neca. Wheeler, nice cut. Cheney finding the space. Can't get the bucket, though, as Thornton was all over him. Yeah, you know, the Sparks have missed some bunnies here. Uh, it might be, you know, just excitement, energy, be, you know, first game of the season, but they've missed some bunnies that they could have made, and this game would be a way different score. Nice pull up there by Gray. Wings by four here. Under five to play. First half. Wheeler getting right to the cup. That's what she does. Erica Wheeler, her second basket of the game. Very crafty off the dribble. You know, she definitely has the explosion and can play with the speed that Coach Fisher wants to see. Gray feeling it. That time too strong as Wheeler gets the long rebound, but it's stolen right away from Mabry. And Gray just being assertive looking for her shot. You know, just constantly on attack of the basket, by, either by moving without the ball or having the ball in her hands and looking to put it up. On the other side, Wheeler just exploding past the defense. Help side is late. And again, utilizing that inside hand, it just gives you a little bit of extra body protection from a bigger defender trying to block you. KG, savvy. That's what she is. Right. And she's got to be to get to this point from where she came from. A little pick and pop there with Walker. Puts it on the deck now. Jasmine Walker got in a little too deep there. Nice job defensively by Allery. Mabry now in the front court. Picked up by Wheeler. That's going to be offensive. Absolutely. Erica Wheeler there getting all in the yeah. space of Mabry. Second time tonight she's done that. And the last time that sent Agumbawale uh, to the bench. And that's one of her advantages. She's closer to the ground. She's got, you know, good activity, speed, foot speed, hand speed. And so if you're just, you know, kind of a bigger wing or guard, there's nothing you hate more than a pesky defender all up in your space making you uncomfortable. You push off. You see the turnovers there. That's no typo. 16 for the wings here in this first half. And it's a two-point game. I mean, and, and, and the wings are up. Yeah, they're shooting 60%. That's why. So I'm sure Coach Fish is not going to be happy with that. Personal foul charge there to Thornton. Third team foul against the wings. For third, Thornton, that's her first. Neca, nice swing pass. Walker, wide open three. The rookie Jasmine Walker had an incredible shooting game in the uh, scrimmage. I think seven threes. Seven threes. As Gray gets in deep, she's got 12 now, a game high. Gray's just being aggressive. You know, just asserting herself on the offensive end. Sykes tripped up there. And that's going to go against Jefferson. And she's on the attack and, and being aggressive. I mean, she takes one dribble. It doesn't mean that you got to dribble the air out of the ball. Being assertive, asserting yourself on the offensive end, moving without the ball. Every time you run your lane, you know, every time you cut to the basket or you crash the glass or you, you take the ball at the rim. And what that does to the defense, it wears them down. It causes fouls, it causes miscommunications, it causes having to you know, trade players off and move too much, and it, it's disruption. And it wears on the defense. It's Brittany Sykes at the free throw line. What? Says she wants to be the defensive player of the year. Claim it, sis. In this league. 
you sometimes you gotta say it out loud. You know, and people are afraid to do that. I absolutely respect the confidence. This is a second team all defensive player in Brittany Sykes last year. She said, I'm gonna take it up another step. I wanna be first team all D and DPOY. Tolliver grabbing her knee. She may have banged knees. It looks to be a little bit banged up. As the second possession is earned here from Dallas. Here's Gray. She's got the hot hand. Gives way to Jefferson. Knifing down the lane, but she lost it. Just keep an eye on Tolliver. Walking very gingerly as she tries to make her way back up the floor. Meanwhile, it's going to be a timeout taken by the Sparks. 39-36, just under three to play here in the first half. Welcome back. Sparks trailing by three. Earlier today, Roz caught up with Neka Ogumake about what it's like to be playing with her sis. I think that we've evolved within those characteristics. So um, most certainly still, she is the fire and I am the ice. Um, but I think there are moments when we intertwine and, and it really becomes fun and, and beautiful to watch and play. Fire and ice. You know these two women well. You were teammates with NECA at Stanford, Ross. Uh, yes. I, I, what can you speak to just about this, the career that she's put together here? You're 10. Yeah, nothing surprises me about either a Gwumike sister or any of the four of them. I mean, it's it's an excellent family. Shout out to the parents, Ify and Peter Agumake, who have raised wonderful leaders and women. But... Um, you know, I, Neka Agumake was two years under me at Stanford, and I very much looked up to her. She was the leader, even as a young player. And it's no surprise to see the leadership qualities that she brings here. And I missed Chanae by a year, but I remember Chanae saying to me, I remember she said, Roz, I know you're broadcasting. Um, yeah, I want to do it too. I said, oh, do you want a shadow or something? And she was like, no, 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 I, I want to have my own show. I was like, all right. <laughs> How about that? Literally nothing. Every single thing that Chanae has ever told me she wants to do, she has done it. She is a woman of her word. She is just her willpower and execution is, is, is tough to match. And I put nothing past her. And she did just that. First black woman to have a nationally syndicated radio show. And it's on ESPN. She's an ESPN basketball analyst. She's an executive producer amongst uh, many other things. Does it all. KT with the three. Much needed three-pointer there for Tolliver Sparks. Just three of 11 from beyond the yard. Meanwhile, here's Gray once again, but she's gonna earn two. Spark Sparks have trouble from, have had issues from beyond the yard. You can see Tolliver getting the bucket there. She's wincing though, and I, we talked about that knee a little while ago. You see, I, she's still limping a little bit. I don't know what's going on. I won't speculate, but I'll just say I see the wince. And coming into the season, she had a media availability where she said, "You know, I feel good about myself. My main goal is just if I can stay healthy, you know, that I'm good. I just got to stay healthy, and that's that's the big thing for her. You know, this off season, she well, not the off season during the bubble season, she opted out." She really took the time to focus on getting her knee and her ankle healthy. She was really happy about that, that she had that time to just really focus on getting her body right. And, and that's the only thing because Chrissy Tolliver you know, loves to compete. Playing in her first game in a year and a half. Dropping out, opting out last season. Sparks down by three. Here's Janae. Nice bounce pass to Tolliver. Kicks it out. Coffee. And she was fouled. Oh, careful. Yeah, actually, that's an interesting thing to see here at the LA Convention Center. You know, a player, coffee, falls out of bounds, and there's actually a dip to the floor. Normally, there are seats there, right? But because our current situation in the pandemic, no fans allowed here in the building, at least not yet. Coffee has a brother that plays here for the Clippers, Amir Coffee. Really just a sports family that she comes from. Her dad played one season in the league with Minnesota. Also has a sister, Sydney, who played college ball as well. 
look like a travel. Anyways, it's a turnover nonetheless. Turnover number 19 for the Wings. Meanwhile, the other way, there goes Brittany Sykes there with the layup. Sparks back within one. Gray. Picked up by Coffee on a switch. Tries to step back this time. Are you kidding me? Alicia Gray now with 15. Alicia Gray is applying pressure. It's great ball movement from the Sparks. Cooper. A lot Can't of bunnies missed. A lot yeah. of bunnies Blows missed. Blows another bunny there yep. through the Sparks. But again, Coach Fisher said coming into this, a lot of it's about practicing the right habits. Great ball movement, extra passes for the Spartans. Screen roll there with Allery, and she walked with it. Turnover number 20. Sparks have 17 points off 20 wings turnovers, yet Dallas leads this one by three, in part because they're shooting 60% from the field. And also making it count at the free throw line. They're shooting 90%. They've made 10 of their 11 free throws. Sparks, for their part, just shooting 40% from the field. And, and a lot of those. Eight of their 11 from three. Yeah, and a lot of those, you know, missed shots have been layups off of those turnovers. You got to convert. About a one second differential between shot clock and game clock. And they thought about the three. Cooper has to throw it up to beat the buzzer. No, Cheney had the rebound, but deflected away, out of bounds. And that's how we end the first half. So it was the first quarter dominated by the Sparks. Wings have come back to dominate this second. And they lead it at the half by three, 44 to 41. We'll step aside, halftime here inside the LA Convention Center. Game one in year 25 of the W right here on Spectrum Sportsnet. Sparks trailing by three at the break. It was the second quarter dominated by the Dallas Wings. Neko Gumake, eight points to face the Sparks in that first half. Now Neko Agumake attacking under control, utilizing great finesse, footwork to finish, running her lane. You know, doing a lot of scoring around the rim. This time, just taking it past the rookie there. Number one draft pick, Collier, getting blown by the former MVP. And this time, Kristen Tolliver. And she's just always poised. She's a scorer, scorer mentality. You've got to find her in transition. She needs very little to no space. For the Dallas Wings, Alicia Gray with 15. You know, Agumba Wale, quiet. Alicia Gray asserting herself on attack, moving without the ball, being active on offense, constantly moving in the direction of the rim and just making it hard. She's wearing down on the Sparks defense. Wings outscored LA by 10 in that second quarter. It was the Sparks with a seven point cushion after the first. It's a little tell of two quarters there, has Dallas in front by three as we get ready to start this second half. Same starters starting the half as started the game for each team. If we tap in with the identity that coach and GM Derek Fisher wants to see for the Sparks, and we tap in on that first half, we would say it hasn't quite met it because what he wants is up-tempo, fast place, fast, 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 pace, 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 and he wants great defense. And you can't allow a team to shoot 60%. And, and the Sparks, you know, they've had some run-out opportunities, but they've had a lot of missed bunnies. So it's not just about the pace, it's about the finish. Deflected out of bounds by Dallas. Wings had 20 turnovers in the first half, and then they started this second half with a turnover as well. 13 on the shot clock for the Sparks. Wheeler, around a Cheney screen. Up against Collier, can't get the roll though. And back comes Jefferson the other way for Dallas. Coach Johnson said, Mo's our point guard. Well, don't forget, you know, Mariah Jefferson had some of her best career games playing for Coach Johnson with the San Antonio Stars. They actually, everybody's new to Coach Johnson, but they have chemistry and familiarity. 
And that's a great place to have it with your point guard. Shanae thought about the three. There's Tolliver. Shanae will shoot that one. Short, though. Rebound taken by Gray. Dallas looking to push. Gray was hot in the first half. Can she keep it up here in the second? You got it. 17 for her now. As she gets the mid-range J there. And it's a five-point lead for Dallas. A lot of contact there between Agumba Wale and Neka Agumake. Looks like that's going to be the third personal on Agumba Wale. She played just nine minutes in that first half, just three points. And if I'm the LA Sparks, you still have to be aware. You cannot let your guard down. Agumba Wale doesn't need anything to heat up. The next shot is her shot. You've got to be locked in and continue to work on it. Neka going to work. Kisses it off the glass. And Agumba K just, again, Neka has not looked rushed at all in this game. Just completely at her own pace and speed and control. Sparks looking to push, and that one airmailed there by Sykes. Right over the head of Wheeler, and that'll be turnover number nine for LA. You know, Neka Gumake is very graceful as a basketball player. You know, she's got a lot of counters, a lot of footwork. Um, there's athleticism, but it's like gazelle-like, the way she moves. And, and so just watching her, it's a thoughtful game. And it's fitting, she's a thoughtful person. Nice defense there by Tolliver. Here's Jefferson. Tried to cross over, lost her balance, but keeps her dribble a lot. Jefferson, up and under. She's going to get that bounce. <laughs> Harlem Globetrotter S there by Mariah Jefferson. Right, and you don't forget, you know, she's almost two seasons interrupted between different injuries, and she's got, trying to get her groove back, but she's got the trust of coach, and there's young players on this team. She's been taking them under her wing. Agumba Wale, the bucket and the foul. I, this that looked like that could have been offensive, Ross. She'll get the and one as okay. we like, went yeah. into the stanchion. And this is what I'm saying. Like, you, you can't ever relax or rest. The Goomba Wale is a, a constantly on attack. When you've got someone who's putting the ball on the floor that fast, that hard, it puts pressure on the defense to have to defend you without fouling, and, and many can't. And that's been a key to the game. That's something that Coach Fisher pointed out to us before the game. He said, transition defense against this team is important, but especially transition defense against the Goomba Wale. We cannot have her have a full head of steam. Now, eight-point cushion here for Dallas. Neca has a mismatch underneath. Can't get the bunny, but stays with it and lays it back up and in. And you see, with, with the moving on of Candace Parker, Chelsea Gray, I mean, just the ball, when, when a bucket is needed, the past few possessions down, it seems like the Sparks have been intentional about making sure that Neka Agumake gets it. Call your pocket picked by Sykes. Here's KT in the front court. Tolliver, no. But a foul on the play by Jefferson, and so it'll be two shots there for KT. So far in the second half, it just seems like there's some intentionality, getting Neca some touches close to the basket inside. She's calling for it, and if she misses it, she goes and gets her own cleanup. It gets the offensive board and put back. So it's not just the skill, it's the effort of Aguma K making it happen there. And Coach Fisher was definitely intentional when he spoke with us today about Neca and her getting her touches. Take a look at KT here. Two-time WNBA champion, was part of that 2016 team with Neca, Candace Parker, among many others, also won one in Washington in 2019. Resigned with the Sparks prior to the 2020 year, but opted out last season. And a healthy Christy Tolliver would be a game changer here for these Sparks. I see increased intensity defensively right now from the Sparks, but speaking of increased intensity, Agumba Wale with a fall away there. Starting She's starting to heat up. To heat up. <laughs> Jinx. No, but that's the, that's the whole thing about the Dallas Wings as Shanae Gwumake is able to knock that down. Rashawn, the Wings have a lot of talent. Gray was going off. Now Agumba Wale is starting to heat up. You know, just wait until Awat Kuir and Satu Sabli come back. And Agumba Wale from three. That's five straight for her. 
This she's now got 11. That's 35 straight games for her in double digits, which is goes back a couple of seasons now. That's a turnover here by Wheeler. Agumbawale on the run out. Lay it up and in. Yeah, it's time, time out taken by the Sparks. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna need to talk it over right now, and it's just been the explosion and ramp up of Agumba Wale, um, and it happened fast. It was really a flurry. It's the type of thing where you thought you were right there, and then you look up. It's almost, you know, it's a, almost a double digit game. What is it? Well, Agumba Wale out on the run off of the turnover. She's just upped the Annie and uh, taking her team with her. As part of the historic 25th season, the WNBA launched the inaugural Commissioner's Cup in-season competition. Download the new WNBA app to check out the schedule, leaderboard, and to connect with fans live during Commissioner's Cup games. Third quarter action here from the Los Angeles Convention Center. Dallas on top of the Sparks by nine. Rashawn Haylock alongside Roz Gold Unwude. Seven straight points scored by Arike Ngumboale. That's her 35th straight game now in double figures. Which is tops in the league, longest current active streak. She's also now five games away from tying the franchise record with the Dallas Wings for consecutive 10 plus point games. Meanwhile, Sykes off the mark there. And here comes Agumba Wale. Offensive foul. Yep. And that's going to be number four on her. So if you're Vicky Johnson, five plus left in this quarter, do you sit her? She just got hot. Well, she is sitting her. <laughs> she is. Agumba Wale is going to come out with that foul, and uh, she's not. She's she's <laughs> and coach she doesn't like it. And coach is giving her a nice talk, you know. And I think that's that's part of the beauty of having Vicky Johnson as your coach. She's going to walk you down the baseline, hold you accountable, give you former player experience, you know, and, and talk you through that moment. Part of her whole culture setting in her first season as head coach with the Wings is accountability. Agumba Wale was certainly yes. pleading the pace there. Ill-advised turnover there once again from L.A. I do want to point out, Sykes had that turnover there, but she also on the other end was the one that forced that turnover out of Agumba Wale. I mean, she immediately identified her transition and, and got back on defense, and that's the way Sykes can change the momentum of a game with her defense. Here's Gray. She was hot while Agumba Wale was cooled off, but here's Collier now down low. She'll get two shots. Foul charge to Cheney. And Charlie Collier is just somebody who, over the course of her career, just continued to grow in, in confidence and in expectation of herself. You know, she's someone that truly believes in work ethic. Her late father passed of uh, lung and liver cancer in 2016 always breathed life into her, breathed energy and confidence, told her she could do it, she belonged, she could be a pro. He even told her she would one day be the number one draft pick, and she was just that. I mean, Incredible, we all, right? Yeah. Incredible. We all watched the draft, you know, the draft together, and I mean, just watching. chicken skin, right? You know, I mean. goosebumps, <laughs> like, just seeing her point up at the sky, you know, and tell her father, you, you, you were right, Dad, like, Beautiful. Cooper tried to dump it off for Nekka, meanwhile stolen away. Wings, nice lead on the pitch ahead to Thornton, and she lays it up and in. Right now, the Dallas Wings are playing hard, they're on the attack, and they're playing fast. Coffee misfires, and Dallas looking to push again. Sparks in desperate need of a stop here. And they get some help. Offensive foul against Dallas to go the other way. Yeah, I mean, it's it's going to come with the territory. This Dallas team, they they got a new coach. They got a whole bunch of young players. They're without big-time contributors to this team who still haven't made it in from overseas. So there's going to be a whole lot of mistakes. But there's a lot of potential, too. The last foul charge to Harrison. Wings by 13, their largest lead of the game. Sykes, a wide-open three. Can't get it. We rebound taken by Gray, her fourth. They're just playing faster right now. Ty Harris pushing it up. 
And with the offensive rebound, extra bounces right now, Dallas is outworking the Sparks. That's the difference right now, Rashawn. Collier going to return to the free throw line as well. Looks like they found some sort of a rhythm here in this second half has the Dallas Wings. Take a look at Collier there. Rookie on rookie action there, two top seven picks. Now, you know what I did like? Our camera got a great shot of that inside that huddle for the Sparks. Guess who's talking? I would imagine it's got to be NECA. It was NECA. NECA Agwumike, you know, and that's what you need from your veteran just talking you through it. You know, this is also, let's also point out that this is, uh, we talk about all the newness happening for Dallas, for the Sparks. I mean, these are all new faces. All it's, new faces. It's a whole bunch of new faces, you know, and it was a quick turnaround. Coach Fisher talked to us about the intensity of training camp even for this team. He said up until yesterday, there was a majority of the team that still didn't know if they were going to make the roster. It was just so emotionally intense at the, at the Sparks training camp. He said many players felt like they survived it. So, you know, in some ways, you know, maybe you, you hope there's no emotional letdown after all of that today. That's a great point by you. And obviously, you certainly hope not as Ted Cooper gets the three there. But you feel like that after that big exhale yesterday, you're finally like, okay, I made the team. And, you know, you may take a little bit of a step back here today. Yeah. Coach Fish saying that. Regardless of what happens today, all the players will sleep well tonight. <laughs> yeah, oh, yes. <laughs> it's been a whirlwind. Walker with the steal. Ill advised pass there. Here's Sykes. Sparks down by 11 here in the third. Sykes in the traffic. Regains the possession underneath Taneka with the reverse layup. Staying with the play. You know, for a second there, the Sparks did look a little purposeless in that possession. And then just by bringing an extra effort, staying with it, made something out of nothing. Timeout taken by Dallas. That was very close. Looked like Neka may have gotten the steal there. But the Wings timeout came in from the bench. We'll stay here as the Sparks have got back within single digits here. And right now, you know, Dallas being active, but Brittany Sykes, what does she bring? Energy. Doesn't give up on the play. Finds nothing like breaking a team down off of a broken play. That's always extra devastating. You know, Rashawn, you were talking about uh, Coach Fisher said, oh, um, you know, no matter what, players are going to sleep tonight because they're going to be exhausted physically and emotionally after just training camp, clawing their way onto the roster and making it here. But one of the advantages that, you know, the Sparks have early in the season, their first games, the first part of the season, they're a little bit stressed out. Now, there's definitely parts of the season where it's like every other day there's a game. But there's a chance to teach at the top of the season and kind of learn and practice. Pretty much one game a week for the first four weeks of the season. Take a look at Chanae Ogumake there. She's making big moves with the 144 dot. Yep. Also, NECA making big moves as well on the cover of Slam Magazine. That came out earlier this week. You take a look at NECA alongside Skylar Diggins Smith, Sue Bird, and Diana Tarasi. And I mean, you got, look, this was this was your teammate. I mean, you, this, you, this, this gotta, you gotta feel good about seeing her there. I mean, I feel good about this entire photo shoot. There's so much so much greatness in that cover. I mean, just and wild this is greatness. Slam magazine. Yes, and 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 absolutely, all of those queens are deserving of that visibility and of that moment. Slam is, I'm sure, Slam was very happy to have them. And you know, like Neca was asked about it, and she said, not only was it cool to be part of the picture, and Avery doesn't get the three, but she said it was really necessary and needed. They got a whole workout session together. They had a good time just chatting and having fun, joking around. Remember we talked about how tough the season last year was on NECA? Three-pointer knocked down from Ty Harris. But to have that little photo shoot, have that epic moment, but then the camaraderie with some of the greats of the game really, really felt good for him. Walker with space. Here's Coffee, wide open three. He pass up a good shot for a great shot there. Nice ball movement. And the deficit is back to nine. Under two to play here in this third quarter. Oh. 
Holmes, all in the grill of Mabel. Jump shot there by Thornton, no good. Rebound taken by Collier. Thornton in deep offensive foul. Yeah, I, I will say though, again, the, the continued trend here is. And look out, that's. That's Cheney on the floor. Looks like Cheney's down. Take a look at the replay there. That was Coffee knocking down the three point basket. And here's the charge yeah. taken. Watch her head. Ooh. It's good to see Cheney is up, she, laughing. She's up and laughing. She, okay. It's always scary when you see a player reach for their head yes. there. But she's up and laughing. She feels okay. Like, this is her first game. Yeah. You know, you're not keeping me off the you're court. You're not keeping <laughs> at all. <laughs> and she, you know, daps up Thornton there. Okay. All good. No love lost. We approach one and a half to play here in the third. Sparks down by nine. Cooper. This is a really critical moment right now in the game, and I'm looking at a half-court set situation with players who are either inexperienced or aren't necessarily fun foundational players, and so this is like a really critical moment for them to come up with something, and Coffee does just that. Six straight from Coffee, and she knocks down back-to-back -back triples. This group has to work hard for each other, set screens, move without the ball, be the group that brings energy on defense, change the game with your effort. Sparks cut the deficit to six. Grace swatted back in her face by Coffee. Coffee is just that, the effort, the, the, the energy changer. But the pitch ahead stolen right away. Gray can't finish. Collier wrestling underneath. May have gotten away with an elbow there. No harm, no foul as she gets the bucket and Cheney looking for a call, not gonna get it. She was in that restricted area though, however. So the lead is pushed back to eight for Dallas. Critical there, right? You get the big block, you have a run out situation. There. Deflating, deflating. Likely a four point switch there. Meanwhile, Cooper, no, can't get the roll. Shot clock is dark here for Dallas. Gray doesn't notice it. And a blocking foul call against LA. Foul charged by Cooper, but take a look at Coffee here. That's the second of her two straight threes. I love everything that Coffee has brought to the game today. Mia has been working hard on defense, on offense, crashing the glass, moving, just being in the right spot at the right time, and, and making the most of her opportunity. She don't need the ball to be effective, but she's going to find ways to get in where she fits in. She's got 10 points in this game, you know, and just has continued to just bring the energy. Tolliver will check back in for the final 17 seconds of the quarter. Gray, meanwhile, at the foul line, working on an 18.4 rebound night. Averaged 13 last season in the wobble. Gets that free throw to give her 19. It's back to a double digit lead here. Shot sparks the opportunity to take the final shot of this quarter. Tolliver around a Cheney screen. Cheney thought about the three, steps inside the arc, long two, no good. And that'll be that for the third. So after three, it's Dallas 70, Sparks 60. As Dallas has come out in this second half with a spirited effort led by Enrique Ogumbawale. Fourth and final period coming up here from the convention center. the LA Convention Center, game one of season 25 here in the WNBA, and for the Sparks, as 10 minutes to play, Sparks trail by 10, Roz, what do they gotta do to try to get back in this? They cannot allow the Dallas Wings to continue to be the aggressor. If there was an aggressiveness game in this second half so far, Dallas has won it. You know, Dallas is playing faster and harder. They've got 17 fast break points. You know, the Sparks have eight. Derek Fisher wants the Sparks to be the team playing with pace. You know, Dallas is putting pressure on the defense. They're getting to the free throw line 18 times, and they're making it count. 16 of those 18 they've made. You know, and then they're being the more defensive team, making them feel them, you know? So you've got to be more aggressive on both ends. Tolliver to fall away. 
She worked for that. A few times, Dallas in that third quarter was able to get to offensive rebounds, box out, make them feel you, make, give them presence, make them think about you on the defensive end. Coffee battling for the rebound and comes up with it. That's her fourth. Meanwhile, here's Walker. Has yet to get active here in this one. Sure, coaches around the league must have seen that tape against Vegas in the preseason. She erupted for seven threes. This one stolen by Vumba Wale. And let's see, are they gonna call this a clear path? There was, there was no possession there, technically. Foul charge to Holmes, so no clear path. Dallas will have it to inbound in the backcourt. Here's a Goomba Walla. Skying for the rebound there is Harrison. I, I, Tries to up and under, no good, but rebound taken by Cheney. Yep, and the Sparks just stay strong with the ball because they're playing, they're keeping their player in front, but you've got to finish it with the box out. Walker. Seven to shoot. Nice seal underneath by Cheney. Beautiful feed from the rook. And it's a, it's a nice seal from Cheney Agumake. And then the rookie, great patience and vision to get that touch and that pass in there just at the right, the right spot. Mabry down the lane. That one swatted by Walker. All right, now you got to stop. Now, now the Sparks want to make sure they convert. Coffee, can she get another three? No. And that's the type of thing where, you know, that's great if it goes down, but maybe it's a chance to really run something and work work a nice bucket in because now you go the other way off of a quick shot and Dallas gets to continue to, to put the pressure on. Mabry knocking down the triple there. Her third three of the game, she's got 11 off the bench. Six point switch there for LA. Control this one down by nine. There's a Goomba Wale. Been in foul trouble for most of this one. Still has 13. Puts on the Jets. Lay it up and in. Did you see it? Did you catch it, Rashawn? It, a little hezzy? It, it, was a, it was a change of speed. It was subtle. It was just a slight rise, a slight slowdown. And then she got Holmes on the okie doke. Holmes was standing up thinking maybe she might bring it out, run a set, and then explosion. First step, speed. And then the ability to finish in the air, hang time, and the emotion coming out. That's one thing you want to keep away from a young, talented team, emotion. Because it makes up for everything else they don't really know yet together, <laughs> you know? And right now, they're just playing with energy and fire and emotion and another offensive rebound. Jordan coming out of nowhere to grab that one. It's always tough when you give an offensive rebound on a free throw. Agumbawale, meanwhile, to make them pay for it. Arike Agumbawale now with 17. She's got more points than minutes. Wheeler's three is off the mark. Kickball caught against the Sparks. I think Wheeler may have. Kicked that one while she was down. Yeah, well, she she was diving for the ball. You know, I appreciate the effort. You know, just trying to be staying with it, and foot hits the ball. But you know, right now this is the type of thing where you don't look up at the score and think, how do we suddenly you know make up for the gap? You just chip at it. A lot of chipping to do. Down by 13, under seven to play. Valentinito against Wheeler. And they hit her with the T. She expressed her displeasure with the call. Ref wasn't having that. Uh -uh, not today. Uh -uh. Well, you know, I think this is part of like the growing pains for the Sparks right now. This is the first game of the season and a lot of new faces. You know, what I'm seeing is there's been some lulls in the defensive end, but offensively too, like it's kind of, this is the time to figure out, all right, well, what do we work for here? How, who, 
who do we work the ball to? You know, we saw a couple of really intentional possessions in the start of the first half. I'm sorry, the start of the second half where they got that ball to NECA. They gave it to Agumike, let her work. But, you know, they're still figuring things out. There's no Candace Parker, you know, no Chelsea Gray. Okay, then what is our offensive play? Gray with another one here. She's got 21 now. But you mentioned it earlier, that intentionality that you have to have on the offensive side of the floor. Here's Holmes, she'll try a three. Missed everything, but nice speed from neck underneath. That one blocked. Blocked underneath by the wings, Harrison. I like the effort is there. Stay with it. Here's a Goomba Wale. Down the lane, no. Harrison comes in for the offensive rebound. It's gonna be a jump ball. Fisher has talked about how the team wants to play with pace. And you get up and down the floor, but sometimes things break down, right? You gotta be able to execute your stuff in the half court. And, and it's kind of been hit and miss here tonight. Yeah, and that's to be expected for, you know, any a lot of teams around the league. You know, there's there's the luxury of returning a squad that really knows each other and knows the system and and then there's the, you know, the time that there's beauty in this process too of kind of learning each other. But if here's the thing that could make up for that. All right. We're still figuring out our identity in the half court set. Push the pace, and that's all that Coach Fisher has said he wants the identity of this team to be, and they haven't been very fast in the second half. Neka coming up short there. Here's the Goomba Walla. Just an interesting game here. I mean, they, Sparks have forced a lot of turnovers, and some of them really have been unforced for Dallas. Nice feed underneath, Thornton wide open, it's Mo Founder. That was a dime. Mariah Jefferson, the beautiful feed there. It's 81-64 yeah. Dallas. And this is something we saw in the scrimmage too between the Sparks and the Aces. Uh, lulls of kind of intensity and the ability to put up you know, some points. Where's the offense gonna come from? And you know, you, you're working on putting together a full four quarters of, of really consistent basketball. And the Sparks have certainly shown us tonight spurts of what they can be. And then there have been other lulls where Dallas has really taken advantage. Here's a Goomba Wale in the finger roll. No, rebound Neko. Oh, here's Cooper looking to push. Arike is going at everybody. <laughs> <laughs> She's just attack. Who, who has me? Great. Cooper a wide open three. No. I'm, I'm taking it at you. <laughs> well, she spent a lot of time on the bench, so probably feels like she's got some making up to do. She's got 17 points in 17 minutes. Lefty three from Gray. No good. Another rebound taken by Necker. Tolliver on the deck. Her and Mo fighting for it. It's going to be another oh. jump ball. Mariah Jefferson, you see the energy, the grit, the toughness? Yep. Yep. Part of what made her a star at UConn, winning four national championships. She'll be jumping it against Tolliver when we come back. But Agumba Wale is a walking bucket. Walking, running, standing bucket. We'll be back. <laughs> For Dallas on opening night, Sparks had their struggles on the offensive end, shooting just 37% from the field. For their night, Dallas shooting 54%. Take a look there at Simone Augustus, the newest member of the Sparks coaching staff. Started in training camp as a player, but has decided to make the decision to transition into her second act as a coach and just one of the one of the complete stars this league has ever seen, Roz. Absolutely. I mean, smooth, silky with her game, incredible pull-up jumper, uh, crossover, and just a true legend of the game at every level. Um, you know, I had the, I, I call it an honor in college. You know, I was a young player, I think a freshman or something, I had the chance to try and defend her. She's just so much bigger and taller and longer and better 
assistant. And so now, you know, what Coach has said, Coach Fisher has said about her in the assistant role, you know, we're really just going to allow her to be her, talk to the players. The way she sees and articulates the game is so elite. Just let her talk about what she's seeing and watch film. And we'll figure out the responsibilities of scouts and stuff like that later. But more like, just let like, her be her. I like what he said. He said, she's a Hall of Fame player. None of us on the staff can, can say that. Right. And so we definitely want to tap in to that. I, I also like that he said, I mean, let, don't forget she announced retirement yesterday, and now she's coaching today. So it's like he said, let's allow her to also enjoy the journey of her career and not just load her up with a ton of everything. Like, you know, victory run a little bit. Victory run. She's, but she's already got a polo. She's out there. Yeah. <laughs> she was working out players prior to the game as well, yep. too. So she's, she's transitioned immediately. Approaching three to play here. It's been a rough one for the Sparks tonight. Started out with a bang, but Dallas woke up in that second quarter and Wumpawale helped him ignite even more of a fire in the third. She's been limited. In case you're just joining us, foul troubles forced her to sit a lot of this game. She's got 17 points in 19 minutes, and it's been Alicia Gray really carrying this team tonight. And she's at the free throw line right now. Yeah, yeah, this young Dallas team, when you look at how the game shifted, they just looked at over the course of the game, more aggressive, uh, more defensive on the defensive end. Pace, too. And faster. Yeah. Pace. They look like the, 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 they look like the young, scrappy team that they are. And, that you know, actually, we spoke with Coach Johnson before the game. We said, what do you want your team to be? And she talked about pace. You know, talked about being scrappy. And that's exactly what they've been able to do here. And that makes up for what they lack, perhaps, in chemistry, familiarity, and experience. A lot of question marks around this Wings team coming into the season. It's great. Really came up with the block there. And it's... This team is so loaded with talent, but young talent, right? Yeah. So are they a contender or are they just young? You know, or is this a, is a team that's playoff bound or, or are they just going to just you know try to make their way through the season? We'll talk about it on the other side of the break. Timeout on the floor. Rough night in L.A. We'll be right back. Sparks trailing by 19 here on opening night as we welcome you back inside the Los Angeles Convention Center. Rashawn Haylock alongside Roz Gold Unwood. Take a look at the Sparks' upcoming schedule. They'll go on the road for four in a row. They'll see Chelsea Gray and the Aces next Friday. And then they'll go to Chicago to see Candace Parker for two. They actually play Chicago three times in their first seven games, and that'll be it for the season series before they return home to take on the Fever on June 3rd. Roz and I will be back for that one. As Brittany Sykes is at the free throw line to shoot two. Before we went to break, Roz, I was asking you about this Wings team. Are, are, they, are they talented enough to, to be a playoff team? Or are they you know, just young enough to, to miss the cut? Yeah, I think that this Wings team absolutely has the potential to be a contender one day. I don't think that it's going to be this season. There's just too much to learn, but that's the level of talent that they have. You know, they're, they're, they're still new. There's a whole system that's being implemented. Um, you know, there's not a ton, really, of veteran leadership, which I do think matters, you know, come playoffs and experience of what it takes to win, you know, at the pro level. Um, but... Do you think they can get to the playoffs? That, that, I think the more reasonable conversation here is it's an absolute win and a successful season to see them get to the playoffs and get a win in the playoffs. Like, that, that is a really attainable um, goal to stand, to, to, to set, and it, I think they can do that. Shot clock violation there against the Wings. They just missed out on the postseason down in the Wubble. Take a look at Vicki Johnson, her first season at the helm for Dallas. And she's got them playing well out the gate here. Definitely tonight. A number of the players on the wings, I mean, just similar storyline. One overseas, had a great season overseas. So, like, not only were they young in the W and the bubble last season, 
But then they went on and continued to grow and add on to their game and have successful, you know, overseas seasons. You know, you think about Satu Sabli coming back from winning the Turkey, the Turkish championship with Fenerbahce, you know, shooting 37% from the field. I'm sorry, from three. And, you know, just the improvement. Chelsea Dungy into the game for the first time tonight for Dallas, wearing uniform number 33. Rookie out of Arkansas, she was the fifth overall pick in the draft. As Ty Harris gets the bucket there. It's a 20 point lead now for Dallas. It's, we're under two to play here. Sykes lines up a three. No, but there is NECA. Of course, just the veteran staying with it with her effort. You know, the other side, Ty Harris getting really important buckets and minutes here. Last season really stepped up when Mariah Jefferson went down with another injury. And, you know, Ty Harris, now that Mariah's back as, you know, a, their, their prime point guard, that doesn't mean she needs to fade away. Now you've got another player who has the confidence and the experience of knowing that she can run the team and be that if needed. And coach is actually pressing on her and saying, Ty, like, be aggressive, be assertive. We want more from you. Basically what Coach Johnson told us before the, before the game today was like, yeah, yeah, I saw everything that the team did last year. And now we're just going to, we want more. I'm proud of them. I like their effort. But they've got a lot to learn. And, and it's just this, like, mantra of, all right, well, what's next? You know, you did good. What's next? Definitely off to a great start here in 2021. And if you're going to play for Coach Johnson, it's going to be a no-excuses type of mentality. If you're going to make a mistake, you make a mistake going 100 miles per hour, that's okay. But no excuses. A lot of youth on this team. This yeah. Wings team so funny if had you wanna, four of the top 13 picks in the draft. If you want a full circle moment as we spend the first night of the 25th WNBA season, you can really look to Vicki Johnson, you know, who now is coaching in the first game of the 25th season as a player she played in the first game of the 25th season. And in both of these first games, she's going to come away with the W. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's Incredible, what she right? against the sparks. Incredible, right, right, right. That's what she said. I said, what do you remember about that first game? And she was like, you know, sharing all the celebrities that were in Los Angeles. She was on the New York Liberty. They were playing the Sparks. Uh, big game. She said, Magic Johnson, our city of Hall, were all at the game. She said it felt great, and especially to get the W. And so the Liberty got the win then. And it looks like Dallas is gonna get the win here at the start of uh, season one and now season 25, so. That was the first career bucket from Chelsea Dungy from three. You saw the bench erupt and then that last layup there was from Harrison. Under a minute to play now, 92-69. Rashawn Haylock, Ross Gold, Unwude here with you, our fantastic Spectrum Sportsnet crew, led by Jerry Weinstein, our producer director here tonight. That first game of the WNBA history, June 21st, 1997. I know exactly where I was. Where were you on June 21st, 1997? I was. Were you born? <laughs> <laughs> you got that youthful energy. You know, it's, it's, Your skin's it's, glowing. Yeah. <laughs> you know, these boyish good looks. Like I, can't, right. I, can't, I can't help myself. I was on the couch at home. And I was mad at my mother because I wanted to take the train to go over one of my friends' house and we all watch the game together. But she didn't want me to take the train by myself. So I had to watch the game at home, essentially by myself. There was nobody in the house who was going to watch the game with me. I was the only sports nut in the house. <laughs> um, and so, but seeing that game was, it was just epic. I remember the buildup and everything to it. And then, you know, you had the ceremony and tip at half court with Lobo and, and Lisa Leslie. And then yeah. we were playing. And, uh. We went to a lot of games. I had a, a buddy of mine used to get free tickets from the Inglewood YMCA. We go to a lot of sparse games back at the forum uh, yeah. when they played back there. And so, uh, yeah, I mean, you talk about full circle moments, right? And I'm yeah. sure, I mean, it's probably much the same for you back in New York, right? Oh, I'm at, well, tell them about our coach's call. He Johnson <laughs> comes on the, on the phone, and I'm, I'm super, you know, gushing <laughs> fan. Like it was, it, and it was, it was, it was two on one. I was outnumbered, New York versus LA. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. 
like, Coach, thank too you much subway talk on here. All <laughs> I had to say to her, I was like, you know, Coach, I'm from Queens. And she said, oh, okay, okay. I was like, yeah, we grew up, you know, New York Liberty fans. And so I remember my mother getting tickets to go see those games. And, you know, whether it was there were games at Radio City, Music Hall, and there were all sorts of like specialty games, and then finally games at the Garden, and it just felt, there was so much buzz, it felt so big, and you know what's crazy, it's like that same bigness of it, I feel that momentum this season at 25, when you think about the orange hoodies, or the Nike reveals of the new uh, jerseys for this season, and how it just authentically, organically went viral, or the way just you know, brands and businesses and platforms are streaming the games and buying in and amplifying these women. They're deserving, and it's it's no better way to step into year 25 than this. Cooper pulling up from the free throw line. No good. Going to be a run out here. Shot clock is dark. Does Dallas take a shot? Yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, Charlie Collier knocking down the bucket there. She's going to finish her night with a double-double in her very first game. The number one overall pick, 11 points, 10 rebounds. Alicia Gray leading the wings with 23. Neko Gumake with 18 and 8 to lead the Sparks as they fall 94 to 71 here on opening night. Roz, the good thing is you got a week to get ready for Las Vegas. Uh, there is absolutely nothing else to do from here than if you're the Sparks, Go, go take a rest. You just survived training camp. Y'all work so hard. You know, go to sleep, and then the next day, come back to work. You got to put in the work. There's more learning and, and learning to execute your identity to come. It's the first game of the season and a lot more growth to come. Year 25.